Thanks for staying with us. As well, taking the final lap of this, um, I mean, I'd like us to really talk, talk to one of the things Mr. Sapirian said and help us understand that we have issues of that failure rate. A lot of people, and it goes back to the foundation. And I know that um, I, I was saying, I had worked with some Ministry of Education, and one of the things that we had tried to study then was the Finland model. Because in Finland, an, educa um, um, uh, an educationist is like the, one of the premium jobs of, uh, uh, in, in their country. They, they took a deliberate action to employ teachers and, and elevate them to that level, almost like a doctor. You know, when you, so the kind of salary you earn as a teacher is almost, um, it's almost the same as that of a, of, of a doctor in, in, in a country like Finland. So it's a deliberate action to ensure more people go into the educational um, teaching. Also, I observed in the issues they had in basic education, especially in Lagos State, I know that the commissioner had tried to introduce um, some kind of a system where when they observed the, 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 the fallout, there was a pyramid where lots of people get into um, secondary school, the from GSS they start to fall off. Either some get married, some get pregnant, or the guys get into drugs. You know, they were having issues. Kids were having issues with that GSS three getting into SS one. So what they did now is div make a division where those who are um, intellectually sound or maybe academic, they go into the um, into one one segment where they now do their YEC. Others diversify and go into other skills, technical skills, and they learn. At the end of the day, they still meet up and still write their exam, but the, it's a different focus. So when you, 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 don't, you don't get to lose more of your, of your secondary school students. We need more of this kind of deliberate action across board because what we are finding is that the children that were churning into secondary school, many of them are not getting to that level to be able to pass their jam to get into universities. It's a major problem. So, okay, so for me... <laughs> There, there are many issues. Mm. Um, let, starting from the foundation, the first key issue is most of our public schools and low-income private schools only teach smart children. So their focus is you are smart, you pass. The rest they push to the next class or make you repeat until three times and it just push you to go. We are teaching, focusing on brilliance. We're not teaching on saying that everybody should learn and understand the subjects. And I can say this for a fact because I, have, I had a son that we, the first year one, everybody in his class were, were reading, like 80% of the class were reading, and he wasn't reading. It was a struggle to get him to read. When you ask him the questions, he would answer. But because the school is a school that is not a low-income private school, it's a private school that knows that everybody must learn, he got to do private. There were assistant classes to help him <coughs> to catch up. His last result, even he was proud of it. Some children need extra help in learning. Our public school system and our low income public school neglects them and they get into the secondary school and we now have a huge number of people that allegedly Dropouts. have passed but are not able to properly function in the university, I mean, or university level. That's a big problem. Another part of the problem is that we need guidance and counseling. There are people that have traits or arts. <clears throat> parents are pushing them because they don't, their parents don't see where the money is in art. Mm. But there is money in every industry. I have spoken to several people. I coach people on how to see money. That's my own area is money. And I tell them, even wherever you find yourself, I will show you how the money can come out. Yeah. So we have guidance counselors that we don't have enough guidance counselors. That's when right. you get into the second, your JSS1, somebody should work with you from JSS1 to JSS2, understanding your traits and help you to see the money. Yeah in your skill, in your talent, and tilt you to the career path that will help you maximize yeah. those talents. Why don't we have enough geography teachers? Because they don't see the money. Why should a geography teacher only be teaching? They can earn a lot of money by the side. So we need to go overhaul our system. We have courses that are redundant in university. I studied science laboratory technology. Somebody in school is studying that same thing right now. What do you want to do? Lab technician. What will you do with that lab technician as a course? What will you do with it? Because in actual fact, before now, your machines have taken away the need for a laboratory technician. There are machines that are doing what you are doing, how to store chemicals. Mm. Why is somebody going to spend four years in the university to, to learn that. how to store chemicals? Mm. So we are wasting four years, <clears throat> and she will come out and now have to go and find a job in a bank or become a teacher somewhere. We have to overhaul. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So what, what has brought us to this level is that emphasis. So let me on... pause you for a second. I have a okay. call. So I'm waiting for a minute. Right. Good morning. Thanks for calling Yemi. Good morning, lady. Morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm sorry, just on the lighter note. Is it a blue meeting today? I oh, see everybody yeah. in blue. Oh, just, just, <laughs> just the blue meeting, man. It just happened. Okay. 
Yeah, that's fine. Uh, congratulations on your 10 years anniversary. Thank you, Yemi. That Thank you. And congratulations on your book launch too, More Wings in Jesus. Okay, and then we want to ground. Basically, somebody, somebody mentioned that we need to stay close, which we are all looking at terms, but we are forgetting the foundation. What happens to common people? What happens to our head? For if uh, someone was saying something about um, graduates who cannot speak English, who cannot like, I also I happen to also be an employee of labor. And trust me, when I'm going through this abuse, I'm always using paracetamol because you have headache. But the truth is, it is, it is not their fault. The foundation was destroyed from so, uh, what we call primary school, mm. write common entrance. You don't say sound and go to English, how did you pass? You write one head, they bring their result, and you're seeing a parallel, and you're asking yourself, how did you get the result? Somebody who graduated with A1 in chemistry, I asked the person to spell chemistry, the person could not spell chemistry. Is that their fault? No. So, most times at times, we also need to look away from what we are looking at now and look down. And then we are also talking about, um, you know, we like to compare ourselves with their abroad. You see, I they are abroad. Let me tell you something. Their education system that we all have here, when we get there, you realize that it is not where we all think it is. At times, when you get there, you are shocked. You, you have to tell, really. So, where is the high thing coming from? Thank you very much, Yemi. So I, I, I wanted to say that um, what got us here is that, you know, emphasis on paper qualification yeah. as against skill. Mm -hmm. Now, when people travel outside the country, nobody cares the paper qualification you have. The questions are usually, what can you do? And so they that brought this Western education for us had moved away from paper qualification. They have started expanding on their skill. So if you are not, the university system there is for very high intellectuals, high performance intellectuals to attend the universities. Now, those people who are, who are not as high in that you know, intellect, it doesn't mean that they are less because we have different types of intelligence. And that's why we need to understand in this part of the world when we are pushing our children to do science and do this. And we have different levels of intelligence. You can see a child who is just special intelligence. Another person is just sports. Another person is just relational. We need to begin to nurture those aspects of intelligence so that everybody can fit into where they're supposed to be. So if, for instance, you are not that high intellect, right? And you, you, you get like 140 in this um, examination and all of that, they can now be begin to, from secondary school, they're already grooming you in the skills that you're e supposed to be equipped for, your natural gifting, so they position you. You can finish your school, get your, um, find maybe your technical schools, we need to equip our technical schools, find what you can do, get your certifications, and then you are working and you are seeing the money that you are working for. It's not about how many university degrees you have, it's about the impact that you're making. So our parents need to calm down so that we don't rush children, because what I see is, because every Everybody's children is in the university. My own must be there. They must go to school. And so we start paying for special centers. So we have a problem of we don't have enough um, qualified educationists to teach them in primary and secondary schools. We now register them in all these fraudulent areas where they collect double money for the examinations, whether and it's WAE or JAMP. And they pass the examinations. We push them. They struggle in with the 140, they come out, they have nothing to do about what they have studied. They cannot even engage you on what they have studied. And then everybody's looking for a job. Government is not providing job. Government, but if you raise your children in the proper uh, qualified the education, they will begin to create solutions for the problems that they All face right. according to what they are gifted in. So we need to, everybody needs yeah. to have a turnaround yeah. of our okay, orientation in education. Let we'll hold it for a minute. Good morning, thanks for calling. So have I. Hello. Thank you, Mike. You're live, Mike. Go ahead, please. You're listening to the TV, possibly. Okay. All right. Um, is, yeah, go ahead, Mary. Something. So, um, I think for me, based on all that we have discussed and our different opinions, is that the things that are standing out for me right now is that we are in a different time. Mm. Times have changed, so the way we educate our children, the way we get our teachers, the courses that we're going to be studying or to study or to be let go, all those things have changed now. 
And one of the things, the problems that we have, we're talking about teachers, whether we like it or not, people do not want to go into, no matter how passionate we are about something, if it doesn't pay our bills, if we see no career path or growth, yeah. we would not go there. So there has to be something to encourage someone beyond your passion, you know, to be in that space. Um, so I guess that's where governments will come in. And I love the um, um, example you give about Finland, um, you know, making teachers to all be almost uh, be on the same level as doctors. I've always thought that teacher should should be. Be, teaching is really the most important yeah. profession anywhere in the world. And if we see, if we, once we are able to do that, we'll see a whole lot of difference in how our children are being educated, the sort of people that will be educating our children. Then we need to talk about teaching techniques, whether we like it or not. The world has moved on to online, internet. Children who cannot access quality education or even cannot just access some of these Ivy League schools. We're sitting in our homes and we're doing courses in Harvard. We're doing courses yeah. in Stanford. If government now realizes that and puts um, more investment in tech so that children in rural areas, children where teachers are unable to get there or refusing to go there, somehow are still able to get that form of education. So it's not zero. You know, because sometimes you go to the school, the teachers are not there, the child goes back home, but the child is able to get online. Jam offices, I'm sorry, maybe we should change you people to online centers. What children will go and be getting um, edu proper education, learning um, their past questions and knowing how to write the um, uh, university exams better and getting better scores in their exams because it just seems to me that the jam questions are not reflective of what the children are learning or they are much children higher are than what learning. they say or the children are mm. not learning so these are the things i'm seeing mm. obsolete courses whether we like it or not life is changing yeah. some things will not work anymore yeah. the courses that we used to run to do now nobody even talks about them anymore yeah. so we right. that has to be something we look at every few years what are these courses that people are not going? It's not only because of um, money that people do some things. Sometimes it's just that it's not, in, it's not necessary in our present world. Things have changed. And also the system is a money system. Mm. People are, are, are motivated by how much they can earn. People want to pay bills. People want to live a better life. So if we know that, then we would, we would um, arrange and uh, we'll arrange <coughs> our courses, we'll arrange our curriculum in such a way that will motivate people to take some, on some mm. courses and... Right you know, be at par with the global um, system right now. Okay, Barista Lavetta's on holding. Good morning. Thanks for calling, madam. Hello, good morning, madam. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, I think it's me to you, everybody, but um, my own contribution is this. In Nigeria, fine, even no matter the kind of school, once you graduate, I'm a lawyer, for instance, you still have to learn, let me use the word, learn on the job, what you study, you have to still learn. It's not the truth. Like, I'm a lawyer now. I'm practicing. No, I'm not, I don't work in a company. I'm in litigation. There are some things, if you don't practice, you will not know it. You understand? There are some of us, they've been lawyers for 20 years and all that. Because they are not in practice, they may be in the bank. They are, they are moving. <coughs> so we learn every day. As a Nigerian, there's nothing wrong with my country. I'm very proud of being a Nigerian. I'm happy with our educational system. But we learn on our job. In our career, we keep learning. Yeah, yeah. Our teachers, they try it. You know, I still remember my secondary school teachers, my university teachers. We still have to learn. Like, look at you guys. Like, some of you didn't study journalism. So you're learning on what you're doing. Right. So if you leave what you're doing now and go back to your real career, you'll be a novice. Thank you very much, so we still have to. You know, this also highlights the importance of secondary school education. We, we've discussed around the world. Not, when I was graduating, when I, when I was leaving school, not everybody was going to the university. Mm -hmm. After graduation in secondary school, it was like, okay, everybody's going to start something, start a business, get a job. And they make it as that, that, that for me, that was the height that they yes. finished their, their high school graduation. Mm -hmm. Because many people don't plan to go to college. Not yeah. everybody, university is not everybody. I think not we need everybody. to begin to inculcate that culture where. You can actually still live a very fulfilled, successful life after a secondary school education. How do we get there? Foundation. You back. Somebody needs to review you back. You know, you back was supposed to be an intervention mm. where the, um, local governments were in charge of, states were in charge of their, 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 their primary schools. And then you back came in to support. But Somebody needs to go back and review how have we done with UBEC intervention? Should we take secondary basic education back 
to the local government to how do we ensure that the children we're turning off from the from primary school are actually qualified to enter secondary school yeah, because we're having a lot of um, um, children falling off. They're not getting at the proper <coughs> education at that primary school level. So basic education is the foundation that we need to begin to redo and rejuggle because if we don't do that, mm. when we now get to that secondary school graduation period, mm. not everybody should go to university, not everybody should qualify. People should actually have a, to a, decent life, have a so, so, to so move so on, I, to, to have a, so a decent just life. Just a response to you, why a lot of Nigerians are insisting on going on to university and insisting you know, whether they feel like it or not, or whether they, are, they have yeah. the capability or not, is because we do not have a country or an economy that is working. Those who do not have the paper usually cannot access a lot of things. So we just throw them into the masses and they are struggling to find even what to eat or how to eat or how, where, to, where to apply themselves. So they've now figured, okay, it's those that get um, university qualification that can go and get a job. We know, yeah, but that's what has happened in the beginning. That's the what it was. Yeah. Those that would go to university will, will leave university, get a job. So everyone is going there now. Now that place is saturated, and um, sadly, saturated not only with, not with, like with every like with capable people, but people who just want to get there yeah. to be there to be counted. So we need to make sure. That's why the country has to work on all levels. Nothing happens. So the economy isolation. will feed that. The economy has yeah. to be thriving. Yeah. So yeah. that even though I had not finished from university, I, I, I'm a carpenter. I, I can get a loan to skills. build my business. Yes. And you still so do well. I'll come to your talk in a minute. I'll respected for the skills that I have yeah. and get a loan, not because they'll be looking at my university right. skills. Or if Let me I take I this call from Joss. Mariam from Joss. Oh, I'm so sorry. The other Mariam. kidding me. From Joss. Go ahead. Mr. Bashar said contemporary curriculum and professionalization of teaching careers are the solution to drastically reduced unemployment. Mm -hmm. Mariam hit a very, very um, strong point with the comment about the economy because our economy is not robust enough to accommodate many subsectors. Yeah. So people are vying for the 1% job available mm -hmm. or the 1% opportunities available. But if we create a more robust economy, we create more opportunities for people. We talk about plumbing. In the UK, in the US, you can be a plumber and you are very well paid. You are a professional plumber. Hour. You are a professional carpenter, a professional hairstylist. You get, you are well paid. You don't necessarily have to have a white collar job or is it what they call it here, yeah. white collar job. So we need to have such breakdown of um, opportunities within our economic sector that people can be pl doing plumbing. My, my carpenter can afford to send children to the same school that I and my children are going to is not any less than me. You know, we need to, in, in creating that opportunity for everyone to thrive, professionalizing every career path, we would, we would be, we would, we would not, we would decongest the desire to go and get a certificate yeah. and probably solve the problem of unemployment because everybody will not be looking for how to get employed somewhere, but they'll be creating jobs for themselves. Yeah. Let me take this call. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Good morning. How are you doing, baby? Very well. Thank you, madam. <laughs> All right. I want to say something. I think the problem of this is parenting. We have a lot of children mm. that are parents now. And the challenge is that most parents, they are competitive, too competitive. Yeah. Even when they know the challenge of their children, they will not allow the school to do their job. And because private schools are looking for more beauty, they will bend through sometimes to start. Like I run a school and I have few children because I've consistently told parents the truth about their children and the need for them to allow them mature. I don't send children to secondary school from primary five. I allow them to go to primary six till they are ten. Yeah. So parents yeah. don't allow, uh, allow it. And some school owners, because they want to make money, mm. they will yield to the parents' uh, pressure. So I think the root cause of this problem is that parents are not allowing their children to go through the normal. We have a lot of graduates. People come to my school, they are graduate, they come with their certificate. They are not employable. Mm. They can't even write good letters. So I look at them and say, okay, you that cannot write letters, are you the one that will teach children to write letters? If, when you cannot write your application to read your resume and not properly retained, so I think all right. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Yeah, let me just, um, you know, add this thing. We need to understand that the university education is important so that they don't misinterpret what we're saying here. 
uh, but there are jobs and there are careers that can do without being in the university. So those very professional um, careers like medicine, like law, those ones that need that you know, long years of study and practice and all of that would have their cutoff mark very high because they need the kind of uh, people that would hold that space. If you are going to be a medical doctor, you are holding human life in your hand. That's not the time to gamble 140 and 130, you know? You have to really be in a stable place to do that. Those are very tough um, professional courses that the university, you must go through. But there are other, there are jobs of the future. They, are, they actually call them jobs of the future. Before, nothing was, yes, nothing was, uh, uh, podcasting was not a job. Mermaiding was not a job. You see people who go and learn professional mermaiding just to wear that thing and swim in the water. It's a job, mm -hmm. you know, and it's coming down here. There are different things now Influencer. that you can do. Uh, influencing was not a job at the time, but people earn a living from that. Content. So we need to, exactly, <laughs> we need to begin to flip our curriculum to, you know, take advantage of the present times and what we can. It's not the time that we're going to be teaching somebody how to do a business administration using typewriter in the universities. I still have some schools that they are using typewriter to teach. Who is going to use typewriter? Who is buying typewriter right now where you can do everything on your phone? So the Ministry of Education needs a proper overhaul and review, which is going to be regular. You need to pay attention to how the world is going and say, okay, what are the things our young people are interested in? So it's not about everybody come or gather, let's write this exam or it has come or they write it and fail. And they have interest and they are doing well in other aspects. Right. So those other aspects, we must find them and begin to tailor them in. See, when somebody's skill is paying, we can always go back to school. I sat down here and did my MBA. I sat down here and did my master's. I did not do it before I came here. You can do it at any time, but you have to get to a point where yeah. your skill is honed in such a way that is paying and paying for everything that you want. And then you can some, keep going back why, Let's give you a comment on social media, but I think that's want. where uh, we need to therefore appeal to the president that whoever he's going to make the Minister of Education mm -hmm. is extremely Absolutely. crucial ah. because we need a visionary. Ah. We yeah, need somebody who is ready to do that overhaul. Yes. That, that, that overhaul you're talking about. Who has also has the kind of confidence yes. and boldness yes. that he has shown so far. Who's going to say, you know, take the bull by the horn and say, you know, this is what we're going to go, do. Drastic changes is needed in yeah. the education system because, as you said, the economy also kind of connects to yes. this. So, at every single level, we need somebody who's going to ensure that we who make real changes. Let me take a few comments and we run off. Lukman says, um, I've been a teacher for over a decade and, I will, and you will be demotivated to teach when mm. you get to class. The government is also not implementing the right policies. Our schooling models need to change. Larger percentage of learners attend public schools in pitiable conditions. Mm. Um, I, okay. I think this was the beginning. It says, jam is not our problem. In fact, they came to bridge the varsity admission gap where admission seekers roam different schools paying and seeking admissions. However, our problem is attitude towards education. You need to see how the learners at all levels take education in recent days. Mm. We have to wrap up. You know, some, even though sometimes I like to say that we should review even the work of UBEC. Or mm. UBEC will tell, tell you that uh, is a counterpart funding. Mm. The states too are supposed to show capacity before I can give them the money. So yeah. the states individually also have a responsibility mm -hmm. to invest in education. So it's, I give a percentage, the state gives a percentage, and then you have invest more in education. So right, it's, a, it's a 360. The minister, the one that yeah. left, called state governors yes. out governors. for not doing that. For not doing years. that. It's a, it's a counterpart fund. It's supposed to come bring, bring your own um, um, money also. But the point is, we need a huge overhaul, um, overhaul. overhaul, overhaul yeah. of the educational sector. <laughs> and this jam... Um, is it baseline requirements or is it cut off? Which, however, we have a ranking. This job, this rank, this, this jam ranking, has Mom. further helped us understand the Where need the of a huge of a overhaul in the educational sector. So we're hoping that whoever is appointed as minister in charge to will do the needful. That's all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we have. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.